What a game that was. Yeah. USA versus the Netherlands. That was a wild last 10 minutes of the game. Uh, I think that's uh-huh. when everything kind of got a little wild. But we literally, we could not sit down for the last 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Oh, you couldn't even watch. You, were, you you had to do dishes. Yeah. Okay. So for everyone, you, I'm sure everyone saw it was a 1-1 draw. And you remember when I told you there's about six or seven teams that I, I would be okay with winning? You take it back. No. You know, it's like I couldn't even watch the game because I wanted them to win so bad. And that doesn't happen with any other team. It's just like, okay, if you win, you win. But I wanted them to win. So they didn't win. They tied. But that it was almost a win in my book at the very end. I hate when the team you like loses and then it's just like such a... It, but, you know, that's the way that's the way sports go. Somebody wins, somebody sports. loses. Going into the match, uh, Vladko kept with the same starting 11 that he started with for the first game. And also, it was windy out there when the game first started. I mean, there was a lot of wind. That first ball that Alyssa Nair kicked, uh, it like barely went anywhere. I go, oh, oh no, because the United States was going against the wind. They weren't going with the wind. And I think as a soccer player, you would rather go with the wind, not against the wind. Uh, yeah, of course. And I, it switched, obviously. They switched goals halfway, and I'm not quite sure if the win was still a factor because the commentators really didn't talk about it. But there was... I didn't really look... I didn't really, I didn't really notice the win. Yeah, you, oh, you didn't? No. Um, but then, uh, also, the crowd, they were loud, you know, a, you know. but this crowd was very pro-American. This crowd was very, very American. Leave it to the leave it to the Americans to be the, the loud crowd. <laughs> yeah, because even during the Ireland-Canada uh, game, it was, it, was a, it was an Ireland crowd, definitely. United States first half, they going into the the halftime. You know the commentators kind of talked about what they thought from the first half. They thought that uh, the Netherlands the Netherlands was better physically, tactically, and technically. Classic ah. PTT. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not a coin term? <laughs> like, hey, we're going. We'll start it now. The U.S. looked tired and flat. Um, so that was the first half, and that was proven true because in the seventeenth minute. Jill Roard scored, and it was a beautiful goal. You know, it was a goal that went through like three defenders, and the sequence leading up to it kind of looked a little bit sloppy. And Roard scored. <laughs> I like that. Someone's done that before, right? I'm, I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have. <laughs> and I was worried. I was. I, I thought. I thought it possibly was going to be some type of blowout. It was going to be some type of three nil. I, oh, I just thought they they, gonna, they were, were going to win like yeah. one nil. So. But as we saw in the Canada game, Canada, Ireland was up early, Canada came back. And I kind of had that in the back of my head, too. Obviously, we didn't win this game. but uh, So that was the first half. The first half wasn't great. Yeah, no. Then, second half, I mean, we, we were talking to someone on DMs. They said Trinity looked like she was playing scared, like Trin was looking scared. and But that was the first half. Second half comes, and and who do we see? We see Rosie. She comes in for Savannah. And that's always a good sign. I mean, Roosevelt changes the game a lot of times. Oh, I know. I love to see her out there. And I mean, and she is the Netherlands killer because she scored the winning goal at the 2018 World Cup. I'm sure the Netherlands don't want to see her I was going to say, I'm sure they don't like her in the yeah. best way possible, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> but she came on and she created a lot of opportunities. Also, there was a pretty physical game. I mean, we say that most most games, but you know, going on Twitter, going, you know, sometimes it's like, you sometimes you think the other team is getting the foul calls in the United States or not. Obviously, we're biased. We're American. So we think that we're not getting the calls. But it seemed like a lot of the uh, Dutch players were getting a little more physical. There, there was a couple calls, but it seemed overall it was more favorable to the, to, toward the Dutch. Now, are we biased because we're Americans? Probably. Me? No. But um, And Rose got a yellow, like, on the first infraction. And then, uh, so, I mean, there was that. Then... I mean, this is where it happens. Uh, the sixty-second minute, um, there was a there was a scrum. There was a there was a pushy match. Yeah, there was a bit of a tussle. Yeah, <laughs> and Lindsay Horan wasn't happy, and she wasn't happy with DVD and Daniel Vanderdock. Yeah, um, um, DVD comes in hard to Lindsay. Lindsay thinks you know it was a foul or that she should oh, be. I caught. thought it was. She yeah. bodied her. She was kind of pissed at DVD because DVD was chirping at her. I'm sure. I mean, everyone saw it. Yeah. And Lindsay was not happy and she made DVD know. And she gave her a little pushy push. <laughs> yeah, she definitely gave her a bit of a push. But DVD doesn't back down from a fight. Heck no. So Lindsay was really upset. Actually, I wonder if Lindsay could have gotten a yellow card for shoving DVD. Um, I wonder if that's a, a yellow card offensible. Lindsay wasn't happy. But then realistically, DVD wasn't happy after being pushed either. So... They were kind of enemies at that moment. Yeah, they're both pretty fired up. Yeah, uh, because remember, Lindsay and DVD are friends. They're good friends. They both play on Lyon and friends in real life. 
enemies today on the field. Yeah. And they made up after the the game. But yeah, um, it's, it's all in the name of the game. But that but Lindsay Horan was pissed. You know, she was yelling. She was saying that she's pissed. And yeah, she didn't think it was fair. Yeah. And I don't think it was either. Um, Next play that led to a corner kick. I mean, Lindsay was pissed and she she scored. <laughs> <laughs> she scored like like Carly Lloyd said in the after show what led to what led to the goal was Lindsay was pissed yeah. she was angry mm-hmm. she was mad and she wanted sweet revenge yeah and she got it yes and so yeah I mean it was it was we were screaming and it was like we really felt that was the shift of the game yes United States didn't score anymore but i just felt like they they had said we're not we're not losing they they tied but we're not losing after that. yeah the game really shifted after that uh you could see like the fire and everyone like it's it's like they woke up more confidence yeah yeah um you know but the the kind of the wild thing was not one more sub for the united states one sub roosevelt and not one other sub and i think a lot you know black who can be a little sub crazy at times but i was gonna say he's subby yeah (laughs) but substitute teacher no subs and i think that surprised a lot of people but they were in a good rhythm alex morgan alex morgan had an offsides non-goal um and there was a couple chances that trinity had a couple chances Sophia Smith had couldn't connect. You know, the last the last ten minutes, as much as it was like I can't sit here and watch this because I'm getting so worried. I I felt like the United States had more of the opportunity than the Netherlands. It seemed like at the yeah. last ten minutes, Netherlands was like, we are not letting them score on us. It was so close a couple times. It seemed they were playing defense, yeah. a lot more, and then you know the U.S. was obviously offense. They right. were trying to. Uh, score right, and that was like the last ten minutes. Um, I mean, last ten minutes was it was it was a nail biter, you know. It ended up in a tie, but you know, it was almost like you'll take it, you'll take the tie at that point. Yeah. Um, that was also the game so far in the World Cup was most evenly matched based on rankings. It was gonna be a close one. Um, and at the end, DVD actually got hurt. She had a head to head with Rose Lavelle, and then <laughs> I hope she's okay. But it was the wrong sport. It looked like swim cap. Yeah, it looked like a swim cap. And Sarah said, I think, because you had blood, she had blood. Yeah, it looked like they were uh, putting like gauze or something on her oh, head. Like, like yeah. I don't know. It, it seemed like they were wiping away blood or something. Maybe. I'm not sure exactly what happened. But, but I hope she's okay. I mean, that's first and foremost. Yeah. But it was, I've never quite seen that, that style of cap. Usually it's the. Uh, I like it. She could take a dip in the water right yeah, after. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but that, and then at the very end, Lindsay and DVD did make up, you know, make up, you know, they kind of went over, shook each other's hands, smiled and, you know, said good game, but it ended up a tie. But right now, Netherlands and United States are still one, two in their group. United States is beating Netherlands in goal differential. Uh, United States mm-hmm. really need to bring it toward Portugal. Portugal is a, uh, Portugal is a good team and that, you know, that could be hard. You want to win your group because you have an easier route to the final. Um, yeah. I mean, could they lose against Portugal? Sure. It's the World Cup. It's 2023. Anything could happen. More than likely, they won't. But, I mean, there's players we have, still have not seen. We haven't seen Lynn Williams. We haven't seen Emily Sonnet. We haven't seen Christy Mewis. We haven't seen... So, there are some players we still have yet to see. Hopefully, Lynn, hopefully Lynn Williams comes the next game because I think she could really make a difference. Um, but, yeah, it's, what a game. I mean, was it a tie? Yes. Was the last 10 minutes crazy? Yes. I kept telling Sarah, I was like, this would be a good game to go to a bar at because to go to a pub or something because you know some of those games at the very end where it never really gets going for your team just it's like you know it's like dead ball after dead ball yeah i'm sure it was constant cheering at the end exactly but what did what did everyone think i mean you know it's exciting was it everything it should be definitely not but also people say you know they sell problems with vladko and the way he coaches overall which which only only Vladko has control of that, you know. Well, and the people in his ear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what does everyone think? Were you like me? Literally could not watch it. I was in the kitchen, like, putting sugar away. <laughs> Sarah's like, what are you doing? Um, but, Sarah, we enjoyed it. What's going to come up next? We watched the Ireland... Uh, we watched the Ireland-Canada game. That's we're going to talk about in a second. We just recorded that before we actually watched this game because we recorded we watched that game this morning. Questions, comments down below. What do you guys think? Here is part two of the video. 
So we just uh, talked about the USA Netherlands game. Yeah. We are actually recording this before we have actually watched the game. So it's either going to be Sarah, yay, or it's going to be no. Oh. <laughs> so we- we're in the past, but we'll be in the future. It's this inception time. So, exactly. Um, so we're going to talk about the Republic of Ireland and Canada game. Uh, it was a knockout game for Ireland. If they lose, they're they're done. They're going home. They still have one more game to play, but they're done. They- Going into the game, sir, you show yesterday said you had Canada. I did, and I was right. <laughs> you were right. Um, and we'll kind of get into that, too. And I did pick Republic of Ireland, and I'll, it was quite the game. Sarah, you started out watching it pretty much live from the get-go. I watched a little bit of a delay, but I'm telling you, you know, we talked about it yesterday. Is is there going to be a tension on the field, or is there going to be uh, any factions on the team? Based on their performance there was no factions, no tension. They played their hearts out. And at the beginning of the game, you saw Rusha singing the anthem very loud and very boisterous. They would bring it, and they brought it, and then they lost. unfortunately it wasn't enough. Yeah, exactly. It was still a great game. But I mean, I guess we'll talk about it now. I, I, fourth minute. I, I, I keep replaying this goal on TikTok or on YouTube. The Katie McCabe Olympico goal. Oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> it is a mouthful. Say that 10 times fast. But that corner kick goal, it was just a thing of beauty. It's like Mwah. beautiful, Sarah. <laughs> I mean, screaming. I, I saw uh, pubs in Ireland. They were like, I- oh my God, I would have loved to be in Ireland and see that live, like everyone's reactions. You know, beer went flying everywhere. Yeah. The fourth minute. I mean, I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is looking great. I mean, this is like th- thinking there's no beating Ireland. At, at that point, I'm thinking that, Sarah. There's no beating Ireland. Right. It's, it was so beautiful. This is the very first World Cup goal ever for Ireland. Yeah, exactly. So, so it meant so much. Yeah, it meant so much. And it was the captain. And it was Katie McCabe. And it was just everything about it. And, yes, it the, the storyline did kind of end there based on their out of the World Cup. But I think it just almost started, just began in the same regard. You know what I mean? They're, because they're going to hopefully be their next, you know, four years and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but also, I mean, I didn't even mention this. The crowd, even before that fourth uh, minute goal, the crowd was... Very, very, very pro Ireland. It was a very, very Irish crowd in Perth. Uh, and it was in Perth. I mean, to have a World Cup in the most isolated big city in the world, I mean, uh, to know that the people of Perth get a World Cup games there, I mean, that is very cool for Perth. Yeah, totally. You know, also, I guess we'll talk about it now. The weather again was pretty crappy. <laughs> the weather strikes again. Yeah. Uh, like insane weather there yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, like, it was. Just before halftime. Yes. It was like the, the wind, the, the rain. The of events, like, because that's when Canada got their first goal. But it was like the weather was just, whoa, it was insanity. Um, There was a, um, Jordan Heidema was walking like through to the goal or something. You could barely see her, you know, because the rain was so heavy at that moment. Yeah. Um, And I guess that's another thing we didn't really talk about. Christine Sinclair, she did not start. And a lot of people were surprised. And a lot of people said, well, it's the first time ever she's not started a World Cup game. And um, it worked out in their favor. But I think a lot of people were surprised by that. And this is where I think the momentum just shifted to Canada um, overall. But in the... 45th plus five minutes it was an own goal um yeah just bad t- i mean the f- you know she kicked it in i think it got the back of her foot yeah it looked like something I think like so, that yeah uh just oh that's the worst that's like a player's worst nightmare yeah own yeah goal. i know in the world cup you, you have been leading this whole entire way and it was tied um second half again come back you're tied up pretty soon into the second half in the 50- 53rd minute uh, Canada scores again, <laughs> and they came back t- down to one nil. They came back, and at that point, I'm thinking Ireland has a chance. Ireland, it's still 30 minutes away before the game's gonna be over. Mm-hmm. You know, make one to tie, two to go ahead. Well, we've seen things happen within mm-hmm. minutes. It mm-hmm. only takes a few minutes, so anything can yes. happen. Literally anything in 30 minutes. Exactly. Katie McCabe played played her heart out out there she was everywhere she was and also Rusha I mean we talk about the issue yes you know we talk about their interpersonal issues right now but Rusha had a great game as well you know what I mean she had a great game the heart of the Irish team out there you know chasing down every ball uh maybe not the most clinical team but chasing down every ball you know no laziness sometimes you see players out there they're kind of half running half looking they were all over the field and the crowd the crowd was 
intensely Irish. And at the very end, there was a couple chances for Ireland. Um, some sa good saves by the goalie. Canada played well, too. That's the thing. Canada played really well. But yeah. when you think about it, Canada's had a tough couple years, but Canada's the Olympic champion. Ca Canada's supposed to go in there and win. You know what I yeah. mean? But at the end of the day, Canada was the winner. And, and as soon as I started watching, I was like, whoa, Ireland's really, you know, I don't know. They were impressing me. So I started rooting for Ireland. I really wanted Ireland to win. Oh. And I don't have two new crushes or anything. <laughs> Sarah, like, I gotta in go. love <laughs> with Katie and Rusha. <laughs> she started Googling Katie after the match. Oh, she looks really pretty here. Look at her makeup here. Um, yeah, I saw that. I'm attracted to the skill. <laughs> <laughs> and she, well, and then did you see at the very end she was crying? Uh, beautiful crier, by the way. Very beautiful. Like, yeah. very beautiful. And she, like, she, the way she wiped away her tears. It love was... those lashes. Who's her lash tech? Her lashes are perfect. You know why? They're not too thick. So perfect. Hers are perfect. They're per they have just enough a thickness. And she was able to cry in them just yeah. nicely. <laughs> I know. Exactly. But also, I saw this article after the game, and it says, Ireland captain Katie McCabe unhappy with Canada time wasting. The Ireland captain was booked at the final whistle for complaining to the referee. Katie McCabe revealed she was yellow carded at the end of Ireland's World Cup defeat by Canada for complaining about time wasting. The Ireland captain was frustrated with Canada's efforts in stopping any Ireland momentum as they chased equalizer that would have kept them in the competition. She was eventually booked after the final whistle by referee Laura Fora Fortunado from Argentina. I just told the ref that she had no control of the game and that Canada and over taking something out of her. We were getting ushered along in the first half, Courtney myself on the sidelines, and the referee did absolutely nothing about it in the second half. I would love to know how much time was wasted in the second half, but I don't want to say too, too much about it because I will start to sound bitter. I just felt that I had to say something to her. I didn't say anything bad. I, I didn't swear at her. I just told her I felt that she had no control. Yeah, and, you know, time wasting is very, you know, it's a tactic in soccer. You know, it's it's a tactical. We remember last year's uh, Euro final that England got a lot of kind of guff from the Germany fans saying they had excessive time wasting. But what Katie's saying here, time wasting wasn't necessarily the problem. The inequity that Ireland were punished for, Canada was treated differently, Say you know, there wasn't that kind of urgency, you know, got to move, but Ireland was, and that's her problem. It wasn't fair. I was saying the ref was, uh, seemed like a little more on the Canadian side to me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I mean, yeah. Um, but to be carded for this? Yeah. I don't know. Is that fair? Yeah. Even after fair? the game? It's kind of silly, I think. I mean, obviously they have another game against Nigeria Freedom coming up. <laughs> but um, I thought it was silly. But she had to speak up. And, you know, nothing wrong with that. Like she said, she didn't swear. She didn't curse her out. She just said... That wasn't fair. No, she should have. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> but all said and done, um, Ireland, uh, final score 2-1. And yesterday's video, we talked about the dynamic on the field with Rusha, Katie, and the team. We are going to do another video about that in a couple of days. Um, but most of the people said in our comment section, whether or not Rusha felt that way to bring it to the field was not fair and you know, not the right place to air any grievances at that point. Mm. And that is a grievance. You know, you're in the biggest stage of the world and to do something like that. And then, but some people just said, Hey, not a big deal. People don't shake hands. Sometimes don't make it something that's not also. So I, I, and I, I'm one of those people who I do see both sides, but most people said to kind of make it, uh, thing and it, you know, can impact the team. I don't think it did though. I think they played so well. I think Canada is just a superior team, you know, you know, experience. They have, they have Christine Sinclair, you know what I mean? Yeah. There was a, there was a moment where the camera panned to, uh, to Katie and Rusha yeah. and they were fine. I don't they know. Talked. The they, they had a, they had a tactic talk. I saw. What did you guys think? I mean, obviously I don't know what happened. The United States came in. I'm hoping, like, yeah, we won three, one. Yeah. <laughs> I hope we do. <laughs> but Fingers crossed. <laughs> this game was wild. We it's very, I mean, such an entertaining match wouldn't you say sir such an entertaining match it was wild what did everyone think questions comments down below i don't know if sarah's going to keep this in the video or not but i do have to say just ireland is going through it it's a really tough day for ireland even more so they lost world cup match mm -hmm. and they lost Sinead o'connor yeah i mean 
Irish legend. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe it when I read that. A, you know, she's young, 50. She was, she was 56. young. 50, that's young, you know. The circumstances involving everything that she's gone through and her passing away, heartbreaking uh, Irish icon. Um, she's one of the people in America, you say, you name an Irish person, you say, somebody, a lot of people would say Sinead O'Connor. You know what I mean? Exactly. So uh, I felt so bad for Ireland to lose. Legends. Their own legends, yeah. So uh, it's horrible. And I, the timing is kind of, Iron, almost ironic, you know that it. Irish they say bad things happen in three. Oh so. God, don't even say that. I know, <laughs> I know. But I did hear that, and it's heartbreaking. And uh, you know, sad, sad, sad day for Ireland. Yeah, uh, sad day for Ireland. So big day. Spain had a game. They won. Japan had a game. They won. They're looking amazing. Those are going to be. I mean, they're going far. Both those teams are going absolutely far. Contenders. <laughs> exactly. Questions, comments down below. We'll talk to everyone later. Have a great night.